Uh, <coughs> Lasker, here, look. I'd like to welcome the Minister to the House and I propose that the, the Bill now be read a second time. Um, I suppose some background facts to farm safety issues and in particular fatalities, which not everybody may be aware of. But unfortunately, this year alone, as of May 2019, nine of the 17 recorded workplace deaths happened on farms or, or within the agriculture-related sector. That equates to over 50% over of the workplace fatalities, whereas in essence, agriculture only accounts for 5% of the people working in those workplaces. There are also many non-fatal accidents and uh, just a quick statistic on that, the, the Chagas National Survey for the years 2012 to 2017 showed there were 2,814 accidents on Irish farms. That was 11% of all farms surveyed. And you have to factor in there the amount of accidents, let they be minor or whatever, there's still an accident, which go unreported. It's up to the individual to report themselves. And as we can all appreciate, there are numerous accidents which never go reported. So based on the above and on my life involved in agriculture, I was born onto a farm and I still farm on a part-time basis. I was very aware of this when, when I came into the Senate and indeed beforehand when I was in the Council and all through life you're looking at these figures and it is astounding, especially when you have a vested interest. So I call it um, a burst of enthusiasm or with naivety, maybe even one could say political naivety, when I come in here, I, I took on this along with some other things as being something I thought I could, I could do something about or something I could influence and help in some way to reduce the figures that I have mentioned beforehand. So I was appointed to the uh, Committee of Agriculture and when we set out at the start of our term to set out a work programme, I proposed that uh, farm safety be included in that work programme, thinking that it was there I would start my goal. But unfortunately, I was informed on the day at Agricultural Committee that I was at the wrong committee, that I, I needed to be at the Business Innovation Enterprise Committee, that it was the HSA who had ultimate responsibility and the Minister therein, and that the Agricultural Committee would have been outside its remit to deal with farm safety. Yet, on the three occasions I've been here for Farm Safety Week, it's the Minister for Agriculture who comes in. When you raise questions about farm safety, as often as not, Chagas are called or you're referred to Chagas. So I began to look at this conundrum. And the more research I done and the more I looked into it, I seen that there are a lot of good agencies, both state and NGO agencies out there, doing a lot of good work, but quite possibly a lot of the problems we have were being caused by some of this falling through the cracks and maybe a lack of coordination or contact between the various bodies, let it be state or non-state. So I, I started researching this and it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's 18 months ago since this project started and we're only here today. And in my research and studies, I done a lot of reading up on the Road Safety Authority. And at some stage, the penny dropped with me that due to its success and due to its inception and the reason that it was formed in 2006 was something similar in that it was a direct link between the Department of Justice, which policed the roads, the Department of Transport, who were responsible for the roads, and to an extent the department which uh, was uh, over the, the HSA. The Road Safety was formed, Authority was formed <coughs> excuse me, in 2006. And since that time, in 2006, there were 365 fatalities on our roads. And last year, 2018, there were 147. This is more than halved. Now, I'm not saying that what I'm proposing is an identical model, but it's based on this model. And I'm not saying it will or can produce the same results, but it is a starting point. And I want to make that clear here today, that what I'm proposing, the bill that I'm introducing, the Farm Safety Agency that I would like to see set up, What's in front of you today is a starting point. I'm quite prepared to sit down with all parties here and none to work through the procedures that are in place, hopefully at the next stage, committee stage, 
to look at amendments and hopefully people can improve. I will accept any constructive criticism or improvements for the better to what I'm proposing. What I am proposing is a farm safety agency, which would be a body within the HSA. And I, some people I've spoken to have said they like the idea, they think it's a good idea, they think it has potential, they think it could make a difference, but are we setting up a new body, or another Quan Law is even called, in some circles? If you read the bill, section 2D specifically says, a work programme prepared by the agency and submitted to the authority. In section 41A, it states, where the authority considers it appropriate, in the circumstances, additional functions conferred on it under this section may in whole or in part, or for specified purposes, be performed by the agency under section 36A. And in 36A, it says there is established a body within the authority to be known as the Farm Safety Agency. So I, I'm not looking for a brand new body. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. But what I want to introduce here is an agency within the Health and Safety Authority which would have sole responsibility for farm safety issues and agriculture related safety issues. An agency which would not just be a subcommittee or not just be a forum. It would be an agency which would have statutory and legislative footing. And it would and could, and in my opinion, should create the link between the two interested and relevant parties or departments, i.e. the Department of Agriculture and the Department of the Minister. The reason I feel the need for a specific individual farm agency, as opposed to the process that's under operation at the moment through the Health and Safety Authority, is the fact that farming practices as workplaces go are so unique and so different to your average industrial workplace. There are 140,000 family farms in Ireland, family being the operative word there. The farmyard can duplicate to being a playground for the young generation or a focus of interest for the elder generation who like to be out and seeing how things are going on. Farming by nature is very much dependent on the weather, which in itself brings a lot of pressures. You can have three wet days in a season like we're in at the moment, silage season, and then when the fine day comes, that means you have four days' work to do in one day. That's pressure that's not in every other sector of the workplace. It also, as we all know, and people will have heard me on numerous occasions in here raising issues about farm income and subsidies and how little disposable income, if any, that the farmer has nowadays. And by virtue of that lack of spendable money, health and safety issues are often, I won't say always, but most often, put on the long finger because the money is not just there to spend on the necessary repairs to equipment, etc., that's needed. It also is a, is a, within farming, you have a combination of machinery, animals, and chemicals. So there are so many different dangers. It's a unique livelihood. And there are a hell of a lot more possibilities of accidents than there are in many other sectors. And that's why I believe it's so vitally important that you can have an agency that will look at this sector specifically, taking into consideration the risks that I have mentioned, taking into consideration the constraints I have mentioned, and making the link with the Department of Agriculture to maybe incentivise, if needs be, some of the measures which need to be taken. Now, having said that, I specifically am proposing the formation of this agency. I am not touching on or proposing or mentioning any policies that that agency could or should enact going forward. I would be leaving that to the agency when it's formed. I did start out, as I said at the outset, hoping that I could maybe influence policy and direction of farm safety. But because of the barriers that I ran into, because of the difficulties that I found in my research, I, I 
realised very quickly that we needed this agency to coordinate the good work, and I don't want to be critical in any way, of any of the agencies or any of the personnel, any of the government agencies or non-government agencies who are out there and doing fine work. We have no way today here of saying if it wasn't for <coughs> the HSA, Chagas, AgriKids, AgriAware, Board BIA, the farm representative bodies, and the great work they're doing, that maybe the figures that I've quoted could and would be a lot worse. So I'm not coming in here to be critical of anybody, but I am coming in here to try and help all those people who are working diligently out there. And I am in, in here to try to start the conversation and to see that we care in here and that we will do something to help all the many families who are bereaved or all the many families out there who have somebody who is incapacitated. When there's a bereavement on a farm or a serious injury, it affects a lot of people. It affects the parents if it's a young person and the extended family. If it's the farmer itself or herself, it affects the running of the business and in turn puts extra strain on those who are left behind. But because of the nature of rural Ireland and because of the nature of our farm family set up within rural Ireland, a farm fatality affects an entire community. It can bring down a parish, it can bring down a locality because they come together, they rally together. But if you're helping out a family who has had some difficulty because they're not able to do their own work, it's putting extra pressure on your own work at home. And that in itself creates a chain reaction. So I think we need to have a frank and open debate on this topic. I would hope that I could receive the support of the House. As I say, what I'm proposing may not be what will come out at the other end, but we at least have to analyse it, to look through it, to go through it, to tease it out, to see its merits. And I believe, after 18 months of work and research, that it is a credible solution to the problem we have. It is a solution that can and will help to change the numbers that I've read out at, at the start. If people say it's going to be costly or there's money reasons used for, for, for why it may not work, I do genuinely believe that it would be cost effective and cost efficient. I'm not talking, as I said, about setting up a brand new agency. It might involve sideways movements of staff. It might, if it's efficient enough, curtail or cut the expenditure that's there at the moment because it's been spent by so many different bodies and agencies. And in the long run, if we save a life, if we save injury, we're saving money that's been spent indirectly through the health services and through other supports. So I don't think it will be any more expensive to operate, but I do believe it will be far more efficient and effective. Yeah, thanks very much, Senator.